This one is a black wire, the first one, it's a grounding wire. So, and these can go back to being the small ones, in mm -hmm. theory, but we don't have a black that small, so we're going to just go ahead and use this for now, because I need to order some more black of the smaller gauge. Isn't it? Yeah, it's a heavier gauge. Just it can handle more current, that, and so you don't want to use it unless you know you're going to be handling more current. And the power tubes definitely push a little bit more current. So everything that I've understood is that you generally should use the 18 AWG for the power tubes and the rectifier tubes, and then use the you can use the 22 for the other stuff. All right, now. We just have one more, which is, oh no, we have two more, we gotta go. Actually, so if you look here, I accidentally messed up and drilled the hole here, but she mentioned when we were headed off that it would probably be better here, closer. So it'll come out through this smaller hole here and then over. It's come clear over here. <laughs> Told you I'm gonna turn this into a musical somehow, okay. one way or another. It's a musical journey. Exactly. After all, what are amps used for? Music. There you go. Oh, we also missed a couple jumpers now that I'm looking at. Oh, shiznit. See these two jumpers here and here? Let's scroll back up again. We missed that one and that one. So we got... And the, another thing that we generally want to do anyway is very carefully look over our layout design. And so this is where this right here comes in quite handy. Oh, actually, I think you have some leftovers too of the blue. Blue is used less often, so we'll do that. And I'll just go ahead and strip off a bunch for you, and we're going to do those two while we're at it. See, referring to your schematic and drawings is always a good thing because you catch these kinds of things. My bad. So the first thing that you want to do on a regular basis is double check everything. So right there, we want to come to the bottom and just look and see if that looks right. So you're upside down, so it'll probably be good for us to uh, turn it back around so you're looking at it normally. Jumper there. Mm -hmm. There's Jumper there to there. 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 Uh, there. There, there, there. And voila. And we have an underboard jumper we need to do as well. Now, we want to probably test those to make sure. I've shown these on previous videos. We want to do what's called a continuity test to make sure that that jumper is, is doing what we expect it to. So I'm going to quickly do those. So the way you do continuity is you put the your multimeter on continuity mode and you touch between those two points. And if it beeps, it means that it's thing. So I always, the first thing I test, yeah. And first touch the two tips together, make sure it beeps. Okay, so that's working. Now touch the two points where they should be working and make sure that you get a beep. On the wire? No, touch the turret, because the turret is the more important connection you want to touch. This is the turret? Mm-hmm. There you go. Now you can also, in theory, once we get on soldering, we'll test from here all the way to there. Nope, no continuity. Perfect. All right, so now what we need to do is turn on the soldering iron. We're going to let that warm up, so I'm going to stop filming again for a minute. There you go. All right, so she's gonna go ahead and start soldering. Let's get your fan going. So you hear a little background noise, I apologize for that. All right, so soldering is not a massively complicated thing, but there's a couple of tips that I've showed her as well. You wanna wet the soldering iron first with a little bit of solder. So you have a little bit of a blob of the solder on it. Then you touch the solder on one side of the turret away from you and bring the solder in from the opposite side because then you're melting the solder into the joint instead of just melting the solder onto the tip of the iron. If you do it that way, it ends up creating what's called dry solder joints, there'll be big blobs that aren't connected well and whatnot. So, Max is excited. Okay, so go ahead and just start with that left side one there and go. Ah, uh, that fan's not even close. Which one? Keep going uh, for it, I'm not trying to get closer. So I'm just, just soldering all of these parts? You, you, you don't want to solder into the top of the turret because we're going to put components in it later. But what you do want to do is solder the base of the turret so that they are now permanently connected to the base of the turret. I want to make sure these are down. Yep. If you need to, you've got the, these little pliers and you can kind of push them down a little bit. But.
when you're doing these with the components, it's really important you don't stay on the components too long. Okay. So you want to practice the get that whole tip wet right up against the thing and then just start flowing in as soon as you can get it to flow in and then get back off again. You'll pull that iron away before you're even done like melting the solder in and then also pull the solder away. Because if the, if the heat stays too long on like the capacitors or the resistors, it can damage them. So. Okay. All right, now I like to do a visual inspection from the beginning again and just see that I see what it looks like it's soldered. I didn't miss any solder connections. I just kind of manually visual inspect every one because I've missed a few on my last video. I missed a few. It's easy to miss you. This is a small enough board that it's less likely, but yeah, we've got them all soldered. Okay, cool. So now we can shut back off this stuff and we're going to start populating it with components. So we'll shut those soldering right off. I'm going to scroll up to here. Now you can refer to the schematic or this picture. This luckily shows us everything already. Um, but if you look right here, if you can see that, that says we want a 22 and 50 capacitor, 22 microfarad 50 volt, and a 1.5K resistor. Mm -hmm. So we have to get our components bag here and just set those kind of loose somewhere on the table in front of you. And we'll have to sort out where all of those are. Okay, so we, we jumped a little ahead, we forgot. We bent one and put it in, that's the 1.5K. I've got this over here, I don't know if that'll be on screen exactly. That's I right, you don't, you don't want it to be no. flat. Okay. So, so. so ultimately, uh, she's going to be looking at a, her layout sheet here, and it says to put a 22 microfarad 50 volt capacitor on top of the 1.5K resistor. And I've got these nice little vellum folding things to make it easier to fold them to the right size. We checked it out and it measures at 30, so now she's going to fold this guy with the numbers of the 22 and 50 on top so that they're easily readable by any tech coming later to do repairs or maintenance. If they see that that cap is gone, they can see what it is easily to replace it. Now there are also two things you can do the way you deal with these leads. You can either just push them in now, solder them, and then later come back and clip the bottoms, which is one way of doing it. And another way is to um, uh, clip the leads first, but sometimes you can go a little short on accident. Now, another thing I would mention is you push down so far on that one, it did, did flex that guy out of the way a little bit. Uh, it's okay to have those sticking up a teeny bit so that they, there you go. I think that's perfect. Uh, I was mentioning to her off camera. Do they touch? Yes. Uh, it, the, quite often I will set, this is something that Doug Hoffman shows in his pages. The capacitor is about the only thing that needs to be regularly changed. Most of the time that resistor is going to be fine for the life of the amp. But the capacitor may go out after 10 to 15 or 20 years. So you put that on the top so it's easy to pull off and put back on and you put the numbers up to the top so that the people doing the maintenance can easily read what they're replacing it with. So right. there's the first one. The next one we need is 100K. One of the things that I've done in all my other builds and we didn't do here is I get these capacitors and I measure them on a, um, a thing to know which side is the what's called the shield side. Okay. So out of curiosity this time, let's just go ahead and do it and mm -hmm. see if we notice any noise. If not, we can pull them and flip them around if we All think right, that's we'll a problem. We'll make a note of that possible issue with noise. We didn't, Yep. that was not a fart. That was me moving in this chair that makes noise. <laughs> I totally would have claimed right. that though. So now we just need to figure the size there and do the same kind of thing. So the first so, thing you do is you whoops. bend the legs totally sideways so they're out like this. Are you sure that doesn't destroy them? Nope, it doesn't. I've done it many, many times.
You're probably fine. It, those oh, bend. Shit. You just don't want to break the leads. I know. So let's just leave it as it is, right there. Okay. Um, bending those kinds of leads repeatedly will cause fatigue and break them, but just doing it once won't be a big deal. I'll show you. I'm missing the point. You put it here and you line it up so that mm -hmm. it's, it's lined up and you want to pinch about here, mm -hmm. but bend on the other side of it. Oh, I see. And then, although I kind of... So now in theory, if you look, this should drop right in. Oh, I got and, too close. And it's then, not centered. Yeah. So if you want, if you feel like that's not right, we pull it back out. Okay. We straighten it back out and we go in just a little bit more and we do it again. Right. And then you repeat. Now, one of the things that you did do on accent as well, it looks like, is this this capacitor mm -hmm. is going to go here, but there's solder in that one. So right. what we'll have to do is very carefully hold this and slide it down in that hole as it's, as it's melted and, and soft. So um, right. let's first measure where we want it Okay. And get that general idea down. And then once we do this, though, we have to hope that we have it pretty dead well, on. We can do it with this, can't we? Oh, that's true. You can, yes. All right, that is done. So, um, what I want, probably we should do now, we've got a soldering iron heated. Let's stop the video for a second, we'll get set up and we're gonna start soldering all those in now.